Hello folks, welcome to Learn Easy Tutorial. This is Lakshmi and I am here to help you learn concepts of science and technology in an easy way. So do subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos. In this video, we will be learning the basic structure of a Java program. In our series, we will be using BlueJ as our IDE. Since it will be first time for many of you using BlueJ, I will include basic steps on how to use the BlueJ to make this learning experience easy for you. First of all, this is the link for downloading BlueJ. I have included the same link in the description below. Choose the version of the software depending on your mission and operating system. Now, let's see what is meant by an IDE. Integrated Development Environment is a software application or a software tool that helps us to edit, compile, debug, and run a software code. It has its own software code editor, compiler, debugger, and runtime environment. BlueJ is mainly used for educational purposes and runs with the help of JDK. The Java Development Kit is a collection of programming tools that help in the implementation of a Java program. It has tools such as Java C, JVM, Java Doc, JRE, and many other development tools, some of which I have explained later in this video. An example is OpenJDK, which is developed by Sun Microsystem. Once you have downloaded and installed the BlueJ, you will get an icon like this. Double click on it to see this window. First, you need to create a project, which I am going to name here as Learnacy Tutorial 1. Here you can set the directory under which your project will be saved. Once you're done, click OK. Now another window opens in which you have to create a class. Any program you code in Java requires the concept of class. All classes you create inside this project can be bundled into a single package. The class name cannot have space, but you can use special character underscore. Once you provide the class name, click OK. Now double click this class to open the source code editor. As you see, there will be a preloaded sample code for your reference. You can edit out the unnecessary code here or altogether remove it and start typing your own code. I'm going to edit the sample code here. The first set of code you see here in blue is called documentation comment. Comments are statements which are not executed. They are included in the code to indicate why a particular variable is used or to specify the logic or use of a particular function. Types of comments included in a Java program are single line comment, multi line comment, and documentation comment. Single line comment starts with a double slash, multi line comment are embedded within the slash asterisk delimiters, and documentation comment has one more asterisk to the opening comment delimiter. The documentation comments written in Java do not include logic about a piece of code. They are used to provide information about author, version, system requirements, references, etc. with the help of tags. These comments are processed by a tool called Java Doc, which converts these comments in source code to HTML format. The next line in the code is declaration for a class. From our previous video, we know that class is an entity that binds data and functions together. In order to use a class in the program, we have to first declare and define it. Declaration of an entity is a statement that tells the compiler about the entity, its type, name, accessibility, etc. And definition of an entity has the actual data or set of instruction contained by it. Unlike other programming languages in Java, both declaration and definition can be done together. Syntax for declaring a class is access modifier, keyword class, 
followed by class name, data and methods provided within the curly brackets. The access modifier is used to set the accessibility of an entity. It can be private, public or protected. An entity which is declared as private can be accessed only within the class. An entity which is public can be accessed from anywhere. An entity which is declared as protected has the same accessibility as that of private. That is, they can be accessed only within the class, but in addition to that, they can be accessed by a subclass. The top or primary class can only have the access specifier as public to make it accessible to JVM to execute it. The keyword class specify the type of this entity. The compiler understands that this is the declaration for a class when it encounters this keyword. Following the keyword class, we can give the name of the class. The data and methods should be placed within the curly braces. It is not necessary for a class to have data members mandatorily. In this sample program, I am not going to include any. As you can see here, the only function I am including here is the main function. The importance of main function is that it is the entry point for the JVM. The execution of a program code starts with a main function and ends with a main function. If you do not provide a main function in your code, the JVM will not be able to execute your program. Syntax for declaring a main function is public, static, void, main, within parenthesis, string, array, arts, and within curly braces, body of the main function. The main function should always be declared as public so that the JVM will be able to access it and call it. The keyword static is included so that only one copy of the main function will be generated and JVM can access it without creating an object. A function declaration should have a return type, that is the value it will return. If it doesn't return any value, you have to declare it as void. The main function should always be declared as void as the execution of the program terminates with the main function. The string arguments are optional. They are known as command line arguments. They are passed on as a string array, each of which is given within a double quotes separated by a comma. Arrays are consecutive locations in memory that can be accessed with the same name and with the help of an index. We will learn about the concept of array later in our series. The body of main function should be provided inside the curly braces. Here I have included only one statement instructing the machine to print hello world. But as you can see, it is quite a complex statement. It has many parts. So we we'll let's see one by one. The println function includes the code to print whatever given inside the parenthesis in the output terminal. This function is included in print stream class which is present in java.io package. So we can access the println function only through object of the print stream class. This object out is included in the system class in the java.lang package which is a default package. So the system class can access the println function through the object out of the print stream class. So we have the statement as system.out.println. java.lang and java.io are known as core packages and they are included in java class library. These packages help the code easier. They include functions that can do many basic and commonly used operations like input-output, database connection, network-related functions, etc. The programmer need not bother to write separate code for doing these operations again in his program and can just use them by simply importing these packages. In order to import a package, we have to use the syntax import package name semicolon. We can either import a full package with help of an asterisk operator. For example, import, import java.io.star or we can import a specific class in a package. For example, import java.io.bufferedInputStream. 
The arguments are provided within the curved brackets. Whatever you provide within the double quotes will be printed as such and if a variable name is provided, the value stored in it will be displayed. If multiple items have to be displayed, include the operator plus. Each executable statement in Java program should end with a semicolon. Now that we are done with the code, it's time for us to compile the code. When we press the compile button, Java C tool included in the software will convert this high level code into a binary code known as bytecode. This code generated is platform independent. The Java interpreter then converts this bytecode to machine specific or platform specific binary code and acts as a virtual machine for the execution of this code. Therefore, Java interpreter is also known as Java virtual machine. If there is any syntax error, it will be indicated to us. If not, the compiler will successfully compile. If the program code is bigger or you have a problem finding your error, we can set breakpoints like this and use it with the help of a debugger. A debugger is a software application that helps to test the program code, find the bugs and correct it. To view debugger in BlueJay, press Ctrl plus T or go to view drop down menu and click on show debugger. In order to execute the program, right click on the class and choose main function. Output appears in the terminal window. If the arguments are to be provided, you can do it in this window. Remember to separate the arguments with a comma and to provide each of them within double quotes. In order to clear the terminal, use Ctrl plus K or choose clear in the options menu. That's all for now folks. Thank you for watching. To read notes on this topic, click on the link given in the description below. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. In our next video, we will learn fundamental concepts such as objects, data members, data functions, keywords, data types, etc. and their related concepts. Till then, bye-bye and happy learning.